Hey, everybody. Um, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to another episode of Number But Ourselves. Uh, today, I have the pleasure to sit down with Elvira Lamenci. Um, she is from Cameroon, currently living in Germany. Yeah. Um, and her clothing company is called Ledima. So thank you for so much for sitting down with me. Um, if you just want to give a quick introduction on yourself, um, just so the viewers can know who you are and also where they can follow you and where they can uh, go and purchase from your business. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I think connecting like this is very important, especially in our community. And even if you're in two different continents, uh, we can Amen. still connect, we can still speak, we can still, you know, gain value from each other. Amen. And um, just to say a few words about me, I don't really like talking about myself, honestly, <laughs> but um, my, I'm Elvira, Elvira Lamingzi. I am a young entrepreneur. I own uh, an accessories business, clothing and accessories, but more so like accessories and soon to be also home decor. We are, that is in the works. Um, that's what's up. That's, that, listen, that's going to that's gonna <laughs> pop off that home decor Listen, yeah, and, um, I know my girlfriend, my girlfriend going to be in there. She yeah. gonna be, <laughs> listen, she's going to be running that website up because she loves home decor. Yeah, <laughs> thank yeah. you. So um, we are based uh, in Germany and France. I own the business with my sister. We are co-founders uh, together. We run it together. And uh, we produce everything 100% handmade in Africa. Precisely mm. right now, we produce in Cameroon, which is my home my home country, but we are looking into artisans and talents in Nigeria and Ghana at the moment. Mm. So we are trying to bring in as many talents from the, from the continent as possible, trying to expand um, our reach and, you know, um, trying to offer um, what Africa has to say, as simple as that, to the rest of the world. Because too often, we are the people supporting other economies. We are the people going out, uh, maybe as me, who moved to Germany when I was 18 years old, voluntarily, or, and now I'm spending in this economy here, right? Or maybe back at home people buying stuff from abroad or maybe in the united states our black brothers and sisters over there being surrounded by by other businesses that they invest their money in mm -hmm. and that is kind of the switch that we wanted to make yeah. and to be the people that are investing in our community and producing stuff within the community and then selling it back to, to the rest of the world yep. exactly so that we we can also offer something on a global scale you know because many of our workers and our artisans and our creators don't have access to this world market they mm -hmm. all they know is that little city where they live in yaoundé or douala in cameroon or in lagos in in nigeria or in accra in ghana or whatever um, they don't have the exposure that we all that we have here in the diaspora to offer what they can do, yeah. you know. So we are kind of trying to be that bridge between their talent, what they what they do with their hands, and the rest of the world that could actually really, mm. really, really appreciate what we have yeah. to say, what we do, and what we produce because it's it's just amazing what 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 we do. So just that black community here that's um born here you know right. and that maybe even never went back to africa they just have yeah. that link because their parents are immigrants they speak to their uncles their aunties that are back home in africa mm. but they don't really have that experience as an african and it's yeah. the same thing you know it's like yeah. you have to grow up and fit in to this society that isn't built for you exactly and you don't have your identity you don't know your true history and you're just like a, you're so volatile it makes our identity very volatile it is and very um very uh what's the name it comes in my head in french right now but i can't find it in english um you're very you're you're uh exposed mm. you are exposed 
to just accept and soak in anything. Yeah, whatever. That so that's you. why you see this that's like extreme tribalism of like, yeah. we got to identify with something. Like I have family that's been on the same block in Philadelphia for their whole life, or there's the same block in Delaware for their whole life. They don't own it. It's not in their names. They rent it, but they go and bang this block. Like, yo, if niggas from over there come over here, we fucking bang. Bend we shoot yeah, yeah, yeah. because we don't have an identity anywhere else. So we have to soak in an identity and, and, yeah. and it's just so manipulated in America. And then on top of that, we're not taught how to reach back to who we are and where we come from. Like I like, so in where I live in Philadelphia, there's a place I live in South Philadelphia, but like right over in Southwest Philadelphia, it's a high mm -hmm. population of like people that come from Africa. Well, we all come from Africa, but like, you know, directly like the, in their yeah. lifetime coming from Africa. And it's mm -hmm. crazy because it could be all these black people and all these people that are, you know, born in Africa and black people that are born in America. And it's almost like, we don't even have nothing to talk about. We can't even relate. It's like y'all over there, we over there, and it's something completely different. Yeah. So I try and just, listen, we all people, at the end of the day, I try and just bridge that shit. Listen, we all listen to the same we type all, of music, you know what I mean? We yeah. all out yeah. here, we're all grinding, we all doing our things. And, I, and that's one of the things that I find really sad because um, we don't realize that unless we unite, nothing's mm. gonna change, you know? Yeah. like. Nothing's gonna change. Period. Yeah. There is not. Yeah. There is no other way to say it. You know. Yeah. And it seems as if the the way that the black population was spread out through the world, it was kind of made sure that yeah. we would never find that connection. You know, like black Americans in America never thought anything about Africa. So even growing mm -hmm. up, they don't have that link to yeah. their heritage, they have nothing. They just know Africans were a bunch of people that sold their ancestors as slaves. There, yeah. is, there is nothing else, you know, mm. which is also false. Like, yeah, wrong, false, wrong, you know, yeah. like, yeah, there were some people, obviously, that always a bad few apples, but the right. truth is families were broken. Women right. were raped. People were right. ripped from their land. It wasn't right. voluntary. It wasn't, Oh yeah, you were just sold off, you yep. know. Like, yeah. And a lot of that history is is unknown. The same yeah. thing is for Africans. We think um uh, the, the Europeans came to Africa to change our lives, to make us literate, to teach us how to read, how to write, right. to right. build roads for us and hospitals and this and that. But it's false. Right. When really it was the opposite. It was the opposite, you know, like we were the ones who originated math and writing and, you know, the whole bit. We just had different techniques, you know, like mm. the Europeans would, would build a hospital, but um, the Africans had their little, you know, healing, um, their little healing spots where you'll be healed with herbs and natural right. resources. And Stuff that's and not that. going to kill you and give you a million negative exactly. side effects. Exactly. That would that won't get you addicted to, to, to stuff, mm -hmm. get like silly... Um, second um uh what's the name um like side you know, effects uh, side effects mm -hmm. and you know that kind of stuff like we you we were healing with nature and that's yeah. always been the case and today i see this healing spa places where right. you pay thousands yeah. of euros and thousands of dollars to go to and i'm just like Everybody God. just takes, yep. It's a, it's such a, it's really a truly like a staple of European culture to just take something hey. black, take yeah. something from Africa and try and sell it back to you like so, it's not yours in the first place. Exactly. And I look at those things. I'm like 20,000 euros for a two weeks retreat close to nature to for mm -hmm. healing and stuff. And I'm like, this is the stuff that we did and you called barbaric and right called um yeah we are just like villagers yeah. and you know people who don't know medicine and this and that but today you are the ones making people trying to do it pay, yeah yeah pay there was a there was insane a, amounts for that there was a so. there was an interview that malcolm x did 
when he said that um, I think it was a Berkeley interview that he did and he and the um, he was telling the moderator he was saying you know I was or I was always taught that Africa was just a bunch of jungles and a bunch of savages running around in the jungles but when I went to Africa I didn't see any jungles and savages until I came back to Harlem New York and saw people <laughs> sleeping on the street you know yeah. what I mean fighting over a block acting like savages and it's really this European influence that's spoken into Africa and African people. Like at the end of the day, like the way I look at it is we all prisoners of war. You know what I mean? Like our lands was, was basically broken up from an outside influence and we was taken outside of our land. Like we was prisoners of war. So now we're fed, oh, you're an American you're you're this or you're a german or you're a brazilian or you're a canadian but you're not if you trace your roots back even if you say like you know I, the last interview i did was with um a guy named david mullins and he's mm -hmm. um like a finance he does finances and stuff in in jamaica but he was mm -hmm. saying even in jamaican um education you're taught you know you come from africa you're not taught, oh, you come from Jamaica and this is what we did. You taught to love where you are and love, you know, your homeland, but know that you trace back, you know, to Africa. Versus I think that where... that's something that's beautiful. And when you also look at the Latin community, um, there are an insane, there is an insane amount of black people there. And they yeah. are kind of like in denial. In denial. <laughs> in the you huge know? denial. My, my brother... <laughs> My brother is Puerto Rican and Dominican. Um, so it's not, I have a whole, so anyways, my birth family and the family that I grew up in is like different because I was adopted at a young age. So I have 12 brothers and sisters that are on my birth, like biological side from my father. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I have a whole bunch of other brothers and sisters that I grew up with through adoption and stuff. Mm -hmm. But one of my brothers that I grew up with, you know, from where I was adopted to, he's Puerto Rican and Dominican, and he's like blacker than black, but he'll tell you <laughs> I'm Spanish. Like, no, bro, because you speak Spanish does not, that's your ethnicity, but that's not your race. Your race, exactly. And he'll really like, like I ain't putting him on blast. He know I love him to death, but like he'll really just be around all these Hispanic people like he fit in like, Bro, that ain't you. At the end of the day, all at the end of the day, we all come from Africa at the beginning of time. But since we all spread out, you know, bro, you not Spanish. You know what I mean? You, <laughs> you black. He'll be like, no. He'll be like, bro, I'm no, Spanish. I'm no, you not. You really not. I'm sorry. Try and tell somebody. Go stand. Go. Go. Just don't speak. Don't speak Spanish and just stand there and ask somebody what you think I am. <laughs> Like, like, oh, you Guatemalan, bro. No. no. <laughs> but anyways. It's, it's unbelievable. Like, it's crazy. I was just like, guys, y'all are all black. Like. <laughs> and I think that it comes from, you know, Hispanic people are taught a value of where they came from, a value of their heritage, whereas being black in America, you're not taught a value of where your heritage is. So if you told, like, I have another brother that's biracial like I am, but he doesn't identify with being black at all. He'll be like, oh, no, I'm white. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. uh, well, okay. nobody sees you as white, bro. You might have <laughs> pale skin, but nobody sees you as white. You know what I mean? Yeah. You people, people really run to identify as anything other than black, even with like religion. People go, people sprint to identify as something that's not black because we not taught to love being black. So me, exactly. like, I'm not, I like, I embrace the fact that I'm half white, but everything came from being black anyway. Yeah. So how are you going to, how are you going to try and embrace something that's just leading you back to the same thing anyway, at the end this, of the day? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, like the recessive or something recessive can only come from the dominant. If you have the dominant, Definitely. you can get the recessive. But if you have the recessive, you can't get the dominant. You white can't, can't make yeah, black, yeah. but black can make white all day long. Yeah, I think for each person, you have to, there is always a moment, there is something that spikes, you know, that will or that mm. 
envy to connect to your blackness or your Africanness. Right. For example, the way I'm speaking right now, if we would have spoken, um, I'd say two years ago, no, let's say three years ago, I wouldn't be speaking this way. Yeah. Honestly, same, same. I wouldn't be speaking this way because I didn't have this this pride of being African, mm. of you know, this curiosity to be like what actually went on i know this is not the true history of my people so i'm gonna find out what really really went down i'm gonna find out what's our true heritage what's our true history what are our true values you know yeah i didn't have this before i remember i had a convo with my boyfriend he's also from cameroon um he lives in the united states he lives in san francisco close to san francisco and i remember we had a conversation at that point i think we were maybe six months into the relationship and he suggested that for the future you know like going back to cameroon and you know going back to africa setting up businesses there and the whole bit and i was just like "Uh uh-uh nah yeah Keep me with that. I'm going to stay right here where I am yeah. because I didn't see the value in that. I was like, yeah. there's too much going on yeah. back at home. We have too many issues or our governments at this. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. reasons are endless, yep. right? To be like, no, I don't want to. The, if you're looking for reasons for yeah. that, you're going to find reasons for that. Mm. But um, I, w- one precise thing happened. I watched Black Panther. Mm, my, come on now crazy. come on now i watched black panther um it was what february 2018 yep. or something yep. and directly like two weeks after that i went back home i remember at that point i had just finished my a my bachelor degree and i was broke when i say broke it's like i was living with a friend because i couldn't afford my rent that's mm-hmm. how broke i was and I remember my cousin bought me a flight ticket, offered me a flight ticket. I was like, you know what? You suffered enough. You've had your degree. I'm offering you a flight ticket to go and rest back home. So I watched the Black Panther. I went back home and just the way I saw home had totally switched up. Yeah. I don't even know that. I don't even know if that movie, I don't know if the people that made that movie even realized realized what they, they did. Have done yes. in people's lives, it was, you know? it was that, that movie. I was literally like sobbing in tears when I saw that movie because it just connects you to something. And you see, you see black people most of the time when you see like, you know, like tribal, like African prince and stuff like that. When you see it in America, you see it from like a historical sense of like these people were savages, but they really showed you, you know, a, a world of the most black people connecting with our history, but being the most advanced, the most yeah. strong, the having most, something yeah. that nobody else really being the innovators that we are. And it's crazy because I feel like when I, I, so I went to see that movie. On my way home from that movie, I got pulled over by a police officer. And the police officer was like, uh, where are you coming from? And I was like, I'm coming from the movies. And he was like, what you coming from, from the movies by yourself? And I was like, yeah. And, yeah. He was like, and he was like, oh, well, what would you see? I was like, I saw the Black Panther. And he like, well, literally... <laughs> pulled, his, pulled his gun out of his jaw and there's some scary no shit way. and it's not the first time that i've been like really harassed by the police it's something that yeah. you know i don't know how it is other places but in america like you get harassed it's by the police real. a lot so like he really was like you know and when you get pulled over you put your hands on the dashboard like it's a whole rigmarole oh my you go through as black people yeah. you put your hands on the dashboard you don't make any sudden movements you tell them who you are, where you going, all this. Like, we really live in some slave shit every day in America yeah, being black. Yeah. So, but that situation of like, and then finally he just like, let me go. Like, didn't even tell me why he was pulling me over in the first place. All that type of shit. Do they but ever that, tell you? Yeah, no, they don't ever. I mean, but it was really like, you know, I was already kind of like coming to consciousness at that point. But that was something that really sparked in me like, Yo, this is not it. This is not it. (laughs) Yeah. I remember the precise conversation I had with my bestie um, when I returned from that movie. I was just like, her name is Christine. I was like, Christine, you know what? 
we have to rebrand we gotta do, yeah like, we gotta do it this is my mission i am taking up this mission right yeah. now because the marvelousness that i just watched this is how we should be seen 24 7. it shouldn't yep. just be in a something hour long movie, right you know and it just had that's what sparked um the the that feeling in me and yeah. when i went back home the six weeks that i spent home i think are the best six weeks ever because i was looking at things totally from a different lens like mm. everything that i saw i look for the beauty in it mm. everything that i experienced i was just like yeah this and since i've always had also this entrepreneurial mindset in a way like from from like you know the kid that sells stuff at his school to yeah. me, an example yep. that was me that was us so, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, since I've also always had that eye for business, everything that I looked at, like I remember, I always also make like um, clothes when I go back home because there are a mm. bunch of sewers in the market that are like fabric markets that go mm. for kilometers, like miles, you know, wow. and um, and there are sewers you can arrive in a space, and there are like. 200 sewers just with tables next to each other right. when you want to sew things there in the market and i remember getting in that space and i was just like look at all these people they literally arrive here at 6 30 in the morning sew stuff the entire day until about 6 30 in the evening mm -hmm. and then go back home and all they do is like they're always hustling to find the next client oh no right. someone needs to uh, change, uh, reduce the hem of their trousers. They need to, right. you know, reduce the waistline or something, or they need a quick dress for in two days. And, you know, it's just hustle, 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 hustle right. the entire day from morning to evening. And I was just like, these people can, they can have more opportunities, especially that it's mostly women. They are mm. there with their kids. Can you imagine? And it's so right. warm. And it's so warm. Like, the temperatures are mad, like, mm. and then they're just sitting there the entire day under an umbrella and with their sewing machine and a baby next to them, you know, yep. hustling the entire day, sewing stuff for just to put food on the table, you know, mm. and that's how I was just like, nah, I think there is a market for this yeah. uh, in the world. I yeah, think there is a way for us to take this, this hustle, this yeah. talent, this dedication, and just put it out there, you know? Yeah, and, and, and I think to me, it's about taking everything that we have and everything that we do and just owning it. Because a lot of places like, you know, not just in America, but African countries, you know, different places in the diaspora, we, mm -hmm. we build things but we do it from a perspective of an employee. You know what I mean? We're innovative, Always. but we're but we're innovative in the yeah. sense of we're working for somebody else. I'm to the point now where I want to own because I think if if like just in America, black people, we have a trillion dollar buying power. A trillion dollars we spend every single year. We spend it with the Asians for hair and nails to get the weave, to get the perms, the pedicures, all that. We spend it with Nike and Air Jordan oh and different places, but yeah. we spend it for the Asian people. I, I did, I had a video that I did like a couple uh, weeks ago and I was like, yo, Asian people don't give a fuck about us. They don't. And people was so fucking hostile, but that shit what? like blew up on it's my page. Truth. Is the truth. It's the truth. And people it's was really truth. like Asian people was really trying to fight me on there. Like, oh, well, I don't hate black people. I'm not talking about your individual not liking of somebody. I'm saying as a whole, as a community, you do not you give a fuck don't. about black people. You yeah. take, 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 take and don't invest anything back. And at the end of the day, that's not their I fault. Don't. That's our fault. We got to wise up and stop doing that. That's another thing that I've stopped. I've stopped blaming the other races because mm -hmm. at a certain point we it's need to fault. Take, you need to take accountability for the stuff that we do, you know? Like you are not forced to always be spending your money with an Asian business or with a European right. business and whatnot. I am pretty sure there are some alternatives. Okay, not for everything, because we, our community is not yet at that in that spot where we own things in all industries, right. you know, but 
at least in a lot of the cases, you yeah, can, you can find somebody find... that's black. And especially if yeah. you live in a highly populated area, like I live now in Philadelphia, you can find a black business for everything. You just have to inconvenience yourself. You might have to drive 30 minutes out your way, but at the end of the day, that's what you're going to have to do if you want to spend. Yeah. Like the other day, I was going to go to um, a mechanic that lives real close to me, but instead I had to drive to get my car fixed at a mechanic like 20 minutes away. But I went yeah. to a black mechanic. Why would you? And I feel like if everybody just gets that mindset, we're going to invest the money back into our community. We have to. I, I like think that's, we have that's the to. only option. And it's, it's hard. It's hard for the person that's not aware, mm. you know, for the person that's aware. And it's like, you know what? I ain't giving my money to white people no more. Exactly. I'm talking <laughs> for that about person. It's, it's easy for me. It's gotten very easy. And yeah. it's just that I'm just like, no, I'm just not. Period. Yeah, there is no, you know, like I don't yeah. get around with my girlfriend, If I have a black yeah. alternative for that, I'm yep. definitely not giving my money to a white owned yeah. business because they don't need it. They, they don't, don't need, need my money. They don't need it. But my girlfriend business does. You my know? girlfriend, my girlfriend is from Barbados. Her her parents are from Barbados and she was born there, but she was raised in North Philly. And she thinks mm. that I'm like she think that I'm a straight racist. Like her and my, my, her and her mom tell me all the time, Caleb, you're a racist. I'm not a racist. I'm just don't think giving so. my money to any white people or any Asian people. I will do that if it's going to be the last resort. I'll spend money in exactly. the community if it's going to be the last resort. But exactly. know that I tried everything because all, you, all, all it takes is for one person to start it and other people to follow suit. I feel like we, and I love doing this podcast because I feel like all around the world right now, we're the ones who's on the same mindset and we're starting this. Other people are going to follow. We just have to start it. So it's not just me today spending my money with a black business. It's me tomorrow and then the next day, two people, and then the next day, three people to where it grows and grows and grows. It's going to take a long time. I don't think that we're going to see it necessarily in our generation, but I don't think my so kids, but it has to start. It, it has, has to start. start for my kids. Yeah. Like I really got into this whole, like when I said, yo, it's my life's mission to move back to Africa. Like I decided that like last year, like, but well, what made you really go, go that radical? Like go that I rad- am moving back. Yes. Cause I said this at the end of the day, I was so indoctrinated by America to where I think that it's normal to turn on my TV and see black people getting shot up by the police and seeing black people killing each other and seeing black women degraded and abused and just violated in every sense of the way. And like, if I have a son, my son has a 30% chance of being incarcerated in America. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's extreme. So I said like, how could I ever bring a child into America and not have, I'm not saying I don't want to ever like stop living in America or I mean, stop having a spot to go in it's America, not, yeah. but yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to fully live in America. I, I don't yeah. want to permanently live here and have my child live here and this, them only know this because I'm setting them up for destruction. Yeah, yeah. I'm setting them yeah. up for destruction. And like my girlfriend's mom, she has a little bit different, different perspective because she came from Barbados and came to America. So a lot of her family in Barbados looks at her like, oh, you a sellout, you Americanized. And they don't really deal with her in that way. So she has a sense like, oh, everybody just needs to get along and love each other. And I'm like, no, like black people in America have been trying to get along and love everybody for 400 years. And we keep getting fucked over. Like every generation, like right now we have, and I'm sorry, I know I'm talking your ear off. (laughs) But we, um, but like every generation, there's these protests in America. Like it was the 60s, then the 90s, and and now the 2020s. 
It's yeah. literally, it's literally every 30 years on the fucking dot every 30 years. Like, I don't understand how we haven't figured white people out. Every 30 years is some type of protest where all these white college kids come out and they say, oh, black lives matter. Or, oh, uh, you got to integrate. And all this people come out and they say all this shit. But if you really believed these kids now that are in college that are saying, oh, black lives matter and all this stuff, that's the same shit that their parents were saying. That's the same shit that their grandparents were saying. Yeah. The cop that just shot that black man, the cop that had his knee on George Floyd's neck, he was mm-hmm. raised by the same people that was walking with Martin Luther King. So yeah. if they couldn't fix it, why do you think that you're going to, you know these what I mean? Why, are, yeah. why yeah. do you think that yeah. these ones are going to be the new ones? It's crazy. Yeah. And then yeah. anytime there's like a black organization in the US, white people got to have a seat at the table as a voice and that's that's another thing that really bugs me the fact that like what what do we truly really own a hundred percent you know in like, america nothing what nothing. is it what what is it with this stuff that black people just can't be good with themselves without a, an interview and a kind of uh, something a touch of yeah. um of the other community into our stuff, you know, like right. we are diluting our voices. We are Absolutely. diluting um, what is really truly in our hearts to kind of be acceptable for the society that is not meant, that wasn't built for us. It wasn't you know? built like, for us. It's, it's mad, you know, today I have a friend, I don't even know, maybe he watches, he will laugh about it, I don't know. But today I have an ex-colleague, he's um, from Asia, he's from Bangladesh. We, uh, we worked together a few years ago and we kept in contact and he looks at my stories and stuff and so on and so mm-hmm. forth, right? And, and he always downvotes the stuff, like when I do polls or stuff like that, he always downvotes everything. So it's been <laughs> going on for maybe six months or a year. And I haven't said anything. And today I wrote him, I was like, why, is, why are you always hating on my stuff? You know, like, I know he isn't white. So mm-hmm. what's the problem? And it was really funny what he told me. He told me that I'm building a business, that he believes that I'm going to be a successful businesswoman with my business in Europe and in the world. And he thinks that I am having a too liberal, a too activist kind of approach to things and people in the right wing in Germany might attack me or use the stuff like my mission or the things, the purpose, the things that I talk about to downplay the image or the, the, the legitimacy of my business in the future when it's going to be bigger and that I have to change my approach. That I have to be wise about it. And he doesn't think that I'm having the right approach that I'm too, he was kind of being like, I'm so too basically, black. So basically, <laughs> he wants you to whitewash what you have to say. Exactly. And I was just like, huh, I don't quite understand. Like, you have to explain it to me because what you're telling me, I'm kind of getting a sense of you want me to whitewash my voice. Mm-hmm. You want me to dilute my message. You can, you can be black, but you can only be black. This, this much. This is all. This, <laughs> this is an acceptable amount of blackness for you to have. Once exactly. it goes, ah, 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 yeah. bring it back in. <laughs> it's crazy. And so, so I have it's to, so hypocritical. I have to turn around my meal so that it is digestible by the right wing of Germany right. or Europe or whatnot, you know. And I was just like, you know what? If I do that. I will not even be able to sleep at night. Exactly. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. it, it is just it's the not, truth. It's the truth it's to us. It's just not who I am. Like, yeah. the image that I want to give my business is not one that is just appealing to a white audience because I also sell my stuff to white people. Yes, I sell myself to white people. And funny right. enough, you know, this is crazy. This is so crazy. And this is the biggest thing that has shocked me in this business in its now seven months of life, 70% of my clientele is white. Mm. Do you even believe it? And I do believe it. Cause, because, because white yeah. people have an insatiable need <clears throat> to try and connect with blackness. Yeah, I think so too. I don't know, honestly. I am still perplexed as to why. 
It's like this. Because, it's like this. Yeah. There's people in where I'm from in the U.S. that are white kids that grew up in the suburbs. They grew up in, in fancy houses with fancy cars. Their dad got trust funds sitting for them. They grew up in the high economic class, but they become teenagers. They hear rap music somehow, and now all of a sudden they want to drive from the suburbs to the hood to be in Just- the inner city and fucking stand on the block and dress like they're black and ah, fuck the ops, we banging on them, but they from country class hills. Yeah. I, I, it's, it, to me, it's the same type of vibe. Like for some reason, people have, everybody, everybody loves blackness. We just lit. We just yeah. lit. <laughs> we just lit. But everybody want to so. be black till it's time to be black. Like I've, I've had, <laughs> I've had friends in high school. I've had friends in high school that was like white kids that was hanging around us black kids. And you know, yeah. they was cool or whatever. So they was around us and they, they was that same type of vibe. Yeah. Fuck the ops. We out here. You know, I'm, I'm banging, I'm trapping, I'm doing this. And then the cops pull over and it's like, Oh, hello officer. Yes. Um, you know, my cousin, so-and-so he's in the force. <laughs> the fuck out of here you know what i mean but anyways that's just how it goes yeah it's it's weird because like my my goal with my business is not only to i don't want to sell only to black people like if we buy from europeans every day they can buy from us you know what i mean like hell yeah at a yeah, certain point, you. we have to level the ground. And yeah. that's one of the things that I feel like is missing in our community. Um, we don't dream big. We don't yeah. target uh, the other side. You know? Right. It's yeah, like, we should oh, want to yeah, sell to everybody. Start. Yeah, yeah. We should exactly. want to sell to everybody. Like we you should. have to. You have to. We, we need to be taking everybody's money and spending it with ourselves. With us. That's what we exactly. need to be doing. We need to be and taking. that is what is missing. Like, for example, we get more, uh, mo- most of our stuff produced in China. Mm. Take the stuff in China and come and sell it to our community. And I'm like, shouldn't we right. be looking for a way to produce to it ourselves? Sell our stuff to China. Right. And sell it. Exactly. Because right. everybody that. wants the resources of Africa. Everybody's coming to Africa for the oil. Everybody's coming to Africa for the land. Everybody's coming to Africa the for, land, the, the for the resources, that is the gold and, and everything. But so then, my new thing is that. My new thing is and so asking or preaching or speaking as much as I can to the community, whether it's the African community that lives abroad or the diaspora. Like, um, black black people around the world we have to be producing our stuff ourselves we have to go back home in africa there is so much opportunity and that's another thing that i totally stopped doing i stopped blaming white people who come and create businesses in africa because the truth is first of all our governments give them the way to do that yeah absolutely second of all us black people that could potentially have the means to raise money, really have a big project and whatnot. We don't think about it. So no. I cannot blame. Yeah, I can't even blame uh, other people for doing it. Cause we exactly. Not- I, I can't blame a German guy or a French guy or an English guy that decides to go to Africa and buy plots of land and start right. the biggest manufacturing whatever company there right. and sell to the rest of the world. Why are we not doing that? Right. You know, and I would love to try and see if somebody has like a fund or if like just conscious people from all over could create a fund or do something to where we can like buy some land, you know what I mean? Or, or do something. Cause I know for all the money that we spend outside of our community, we could literally just take a small bit and just, and just give it back and have our own space. You know what I mean? And like one thing that people will say to me when they always say, oh, why you want to move back to Africa is they'll say, oh, you know, people in Africa got its own problems and Africa governments are corrupt. And, you know, African people, they might not even accept you because you're American and you're white That's a huge lie. That's a lie. That's part. It's a big lie. I've never spoken to an African who has refused a black person ever. Like, it's not... The first thing is that we accept 
foreigners that are not black. So it's not a black person that we're going to reject. You know what I mean? Like, it makes no sense whatsoever. And even, and even if like, and I know that eventually trying to move back to Africa, of course, it's going to come with its own set of problems. But I would rather, I would rather tackle those problems than tackle the problems of staying in America and never (laughs) giving anything back to my kids. Because even because like in the US, the idea of like making it in like all of like our rap music, like, uh, uh, like athletes, sports, culture, it's all, I want to make it and I want to leave the hood. I want to make it. I want to go live with the white people. I, I, I want to make it. I want to buy my mama a house, you know what I mean? And move my moms out the hood. So our whole mentality is twisted because we're told the, the goal of life is to get away from black people, basically. That's what you want to do. If you, you can be successful if you get away from black people. Yeah. And I'm trying to do the complete opposite. I'm trying to like, like my girlfriend, we're, we're in the process of trying to buy a house right now. And she want to go out in like the suburbs, which is nice. But like, I'm like, yo, I'm not, I'm not going to not live around black people. You know what I mean? Like, I don't mind going to the suburbs, like if it's a black suburb, but like, I'm not going to not live around black people. That's crazy to me. You know what I mean? That's like, it's just mad to me. It's mad. And it's the same thing for, you know, there are so many similarities. It's crazy. Like you are in America, I'm in Europe. I did not grow up there. The experiences are different, but the same, because it's the same thing for African immigrants that, migrate to Europe it's like oh now I'm in the land of the white man yeah I'm gonna just make my life here life is sweet here you know there is a bunch of things and you know the way they go back home in Africa like back home when they go on holiday and stuff they flash kind of stuff on people. And yeah. they're like oh yeah I have money I live nicely you know I have a nice car I wear Gucci and all of that stuff it's cooning. just for the standard you know mm. for like and i think it is a very internalized um inferiority complex exactly that we have exactly because the fact that we define our success to whiteness is a problem yeah it is so a such problem. a problem but it is it is just deeply so ingrained in our culture you don't even need we, yeah. to live in the united states you know it is so ingrained in our culture. how many people have i spoken to here in europe that are just like oh who me go back never like forget. yeah it's crazy forget. it really is crazy and like you said it really is so deeply ingrained in us like you could really be across the world we dealing with the same issues that's why i think in, in a certain way, it's such a blessing that we all dealing with the same issues because we can speak about stuff and articulate and really be on the same page because wherever we are in the world, we're dealing it's with those same, same issues. Yeah, we, everywhere, same. everywhere you go, Black people are incarcerated oh, more, economically inferior, trying to, trying to figure out, like Malcolm X said, um, he used to say that the goal of the civil rights, um, the goal of the civil rights movement in the 60s was just to sit at a restaurant with the person who's been oppressing you for 400 years. We're always trying to go and be accepted sit at the, sit at the table yeah. with people who done showed us a million <laughs> times. They don't want us there or yeah. only want us there on their terms when they can exploit. Yeah. So, but anyway. yeah, it's, it's mad. It's crazy. It's crazy. And I think that's one of the things it, it starts psychologically. It yeah. starts with a mindset. If, if one doesn't have that switch in their mind, it's going to be very, very difficult to get our people to really kind of think a different way, yeah. you know, and it, it just, it has to be that spark. You just cannot yeah. make it up. You, you yeah. Just I really think it's God. It's like, I think it's God and your ancestors. Just that's just like, up. yeah, exactly. It's just waking you up. And but that's for me. It was the Black Panther movie and then going back home directly. I think that timing did something. Mm, like yeah. Black Panther, two weeks after that, I was back home, yeah. surrounded by all that greatness. And right. I just looked at it with new eyes, fresh yeah. eyes, eyes that I had never looked at it with. Yeah. Because 
two weeks prior, I would have told you, oh, nah, like we have a dictator that's been in power for 36 years. Anyone who tries to go against him is either shot or imprisoned. You know, like there is no hope for us. You know, the society is screwed up. The corruption is bad. And the mentality of the people is totally off. And, you know, I would have told you so many things. And right. just that spark, that that thing that got me thinking totally switched my perspective on the, on everything. Yeah. So maybe it is it was that for me. It was you, you 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 also had your spark and stuff. And at this point, I believe that every black person that is aware of that of this conversation that we're having um, has to do something to create that spark into someone else. Mm. So, yeah, and it's and it's amazing because. Like you said, it was a time when you would have said, oh, Africa, I'm not going back to Africa. It was a time when somebody would have said to me, oh, you know, basically, what are you going to do to support your community? I would have been like, well, basically, fuck these niggas. Like, I'm getting it myself. <laughs> like, what you mean what I'm going to do to support my community? I'm going to get on. I'm going to get the fuck out of here. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> but if we was on that type of level and we are now how we move in now, it gives me such a hope for our community in the future because there's so many other people who's going to have that uh, enlightening yeah. awakening and we're going to teach our kids so that our the next generation can just boom right from the jump.